I would love to have a fancy in-ear monitor rig for my band with a huge rack full of an interface and could do individual monitor mixes, wireless packs for in-ear monitors and maybe some rack mounted guitar amps. You could have your whole band sound in one giant rack. That would be awesome, but they're not cheap. You know, something like that might run you 10,000, maybe 15,000, but I've got the cheapest solution and that's a little analog mixer. It doesn't matter what kind it is. It doesn't really matter too much how big it is or if it has effects or anything. You can get them for like under a hundred bucks. And that's the heart of today's build. And I've used this in the rehearsal room as well as live. I've used it for vocals and a whole band pretty much. Whatever you want, you can set up how you want it and how you need it. Why would you want to do this? Well, because if you're singing, especially in a band, you might want to hear yourself clearly so that you can sing the right notes or maybe monitor your instrument so that you're playing well. It's pretty important to hear yourself. I, I think we can all agree on that. Something like this is small, it's cheap, it doesn't require a whole lot of setup, and it works. And it works well. In the types of venues my bands have always played in, whether that's dive bars or house shows or small clubs, monitoring has never been good. You might get a floor wedge, and whether or not you can hear yourself is certainly not a guarantee, and the answer is most likely no, you can't. And I would like to be able to hear myself clearly, especially so that I can make sure I'm singing the right notes and that hopefully my tone is not terrible. Another great use for this is in the rehearsal room where you may struggle to get your vocals loud enough to be clear without getting terrible feedback or blowing up speakers. And you may not really have a live PA that's equipped for what you need it to do. This is also far cheaper if you don't have a PA because you don't need one. Besides the fact that we're all used to playing with speakers in the room rather than in-ear monitors, there's no real need or benefit to having a big PA system considering the cost and also the inferiority of the sound you get from it when you could just spend less money. And so let's do that. I'll show you how to set this up. And this is my rig. It's, it's cheap. It's kind of what I have and what I've cobbled together. Doesn't really matter the brands, the products, as long as you have the necessary components and you understand how it works. But it's also very easy. So let's take a look at my setup here. Here are all the basic components of this setup. And we'll start with the mixer. The size and type of mixer you want to get depends entirely on your budget and what you want to do with it. And you can kind of see from my labels here what I've used it for. At its fullest extent, I've had three vocals, plus a kick drum, plus a direct out from my bass, a guitar mic, two guitar mics actually, and a snare. And that uses up every channel of this mixer and it works pretty well. Now you're not gonna get a studio quality recording off this, it doesn't even record, but you can monitor everything and you can hear the important drums and even your instruments as well as your vocals. But if you just want a vocal monitor rig, you could also simplify it and get a smaller one. It doesn't really matter. Either way, it depends on what you want to do with it. This is what you're going to need. Just an analog mixer. Any kind will do. It's going to be loud enough to drive headphones. No problem. And that's what you're going to use. So the next thing that's important is some in-ear monitors. And again, you can buy whatever kind you want. I use these and I like them. They're the KZ ZSN Pros. I think they're pretty good, especially for $25. You can't really go wrong with them. They're nice and clear. They're good in live situations. I think they look pretty cool too. And I've used them for several years with no issues for durability in live situations. I haven't always been perfectly gentle with them and I have not broken them. So that's a plus. You're also gonna need some memory foam tips with these. And those are basically gonna be your earplugs to isolate you from the background sound, but they're not so isolating that you can't hear your band. I can hear my band just fine. I can hear my bass just fine. And I usually just run the vocals live because it takes a while to set everything else up, though you can, of course, but you don't need to. You're also gonna need a headphone extension cable. This is a 25 foot one, and that's always been more than enough for me. And it is stereo, it's male to female, and I use a stereo eighth inch to quarter inch plug so I can take the plug from 
the headphones out on the mixer. If you want to run in-ear monitors for the rest of your band, you're going to need a little headphone amp. And this is a four channel one. It's got individual volume controls. I paid $25 for this one. And you're going to take a quarter inch stereo cable from the headphones out on your mixer to the input here, and then run all your individual monitors on the back of this. So this is the easy solution. And this is all what I would say is recommended kit. Um, because you're probably going to want to have the rest of your band hearing stuff nicely too. In the rehearsal room, you're not going to need this cable, but live you will. And this is just a splitter cable for XLRs. It's a mono cable and you can take one signal and turn it into two. So I plug this end into my microphone and then I've got two outputs. One of them is going to go into my mixer. The other one, I'm going to take the cable given to me by the sound engineer at the venue and use that one. So the one that would normally go into my mic is going to go into the other end of the splitter. Therefore, front of house still has the same signal they would have had uh, had I not done this. And if you get a look from the sound guy, just explain it or don't. So in a live situation, my setup is pretty quick. I've got power to the board. I've got my mic with my splitter cable. The mic is going in here. I've got my vocal channel. I've got volume. I've got some EQ. I've got effects. I'm going to leave the panning alone. And I've got my headphones out, which would have the extension cable. And if I'm running multiple mics, I just duplicate that setup. And if I'm running multiple monitors, I just have the headphone mixer as well, which also requires power. So at most you're looking at two spots of power and however many cables as you're running mics to. Now this is a wired setup, of course. If it was wireless, it would be much more expensive. A single wireless pack would probably cost as much as this whole thing because this entire setup should be under $200. The price does go up depending on how many headphones you're running and how many mics, but it's still very cheap. So these splitter cables run around $10. These extension cables, I got this for about $10. The monitors themselves were 25. The headphone mixer was about 25. And the board itself, you can get these for around 100. This particular unit might be 150 or something right now. I don't know. I've had this one for a long, long time. Even with multiple mics and multiple monitors, you're looking at no more than a few hundred dollars. And if you have a band, they should buy their own monitors. They should buy their own headphone cables. And uh, maybe they'll even chip in on some of the mic splitters. And that's all it takes. There are some questions you may have with this setup, so let's go over those. First of all, is it loud enough? Yes, it's totally loud enough. It's way louder than necessary. As mentioned, the in-ear monitors with those memory foam tips are going to cut out your outside noise, so you're just listening to headphones. It doesn't really have to be any louder than you would listen to headphones normally. Probably louder than you would uh, at home because you're playing a show and it's going to be loud and you're going to want to hear yourself. But the headphones are more than capable. The mixer is more than capable. You can deafen yourself before you run out of power with this system as far as that goes because it's only driving headphones and there's plenty of juice on tap for that. The in-ear monitors with the memory foam tips are similar sounding to a set of standard earplugs. Not quite as clear as a good quality musician's earplugs but it's not terrible and you can still hear things fine without running them all through the monitoring system. In other words, I can hear the drummer just fine through these without miking up the drum kit and I can hear my bass amp just fine because it's really loud without miking that up. This board also has built-in effects, which is nice because you can put some delay or some reverb on your vocals and get into the performance that much more. And none of this will be affecting front of house because you're splitting it right off your mic. Their signal's unchanged. They can process it how they want, you can process it how you want, and everyone wins. It's annoying to have all those extra cables on stage with your in-ear monitors, an extension cable, extra mic cables. In my experience, no, it's not really been an issue, but more cables is always more annoying. Now, if you get long cables, you're not going to run out of reach on them, but you do have to potentially worry about unplugging them, and they can just be kind of annoying to have cables running behind your head for the monitors. That is a little bit of a, an issue sometimes in terms of comfort 
and maybe getting unplugged. I've occasionally ripped a monitor out of my ear just from headbanging and stuff. So that can happen. You do have to be a little more careful about that. I haven't done it yet, but I do want to experiment with finding some ways to make the cables less annoying, like having some sort of relief or attachment point on my base strap so that I have enough slack on the in-ears that they're not being tugged, not ripping them out either from the headphone extension cable or from my ears, which is even worse because then you don't have hearing protection either. So that is something to consider. You could attach them to your instrument cable, to your strap. There are creative solutions that can be had with probably just some tape or some string or something. A wireless system isn't really gonna improve this much because you're still gonna have that most annoying of cables, which is from your in-ear monitors running down your back to a wireless pack, either on your instrument strap or in your pocket. And so that's really the worst cable and you're gonna have that even with an expensive wireless pack. However, if you're running around arenas and doing acrobatics and you need more than 25 feet of cable will give you in terms of room to run and jump and kick, maybe a wireless pack is right for you, but it's more gear to bring, it's more expensive, a lot more expensive, and it's more stuff to set up and more failure points. So I think wired is a great way to go and there's really no need to go wireless just because other people do it. A system like this doesn't do individual monitor mixes. So while you can adjust the volume to each person's headphones, you're not gonna be able to send more guitar, more of one person's vocals than on the other channels. I don't think that's an issue for most bands. I think that this is already gonna sound so much better and clearer that you can find an acceptable balance amongst yourselves that you don't need to have individual mixes because they would probably be mostly the same anyways. There are cases where you might really need individual monitor mixes, but it's probably not being a local metal band. I also highly recommend using this over a traditional PA in your band rehearsal room. You can hear the vocals much better. You don't need speakers. You don't need a power amp. It's cheaper, it's quieter, and it sounds better. Now you could also get fancier than I have here and you could have a really big analog mixer in your rehearsal room with the whole drum kit mic'd up and all the instruments mic'd up, just like you're ready to record a CD. And you could then record the output of that mixer to some kind of portable recorder or a computer. And you could have really good sounding demo tracks once it's dialed in. And that would be awesome. It's more than I've ever done with it, but it's certainly doable and not a bad idea. Now I did try at exactly two gigs, a fancier setup with the Tascam Model 12, which is a portable multi-track recorder and an analog mixer. And I set up individual vocal mics, a pair of stereo condensers for the big picture, as well as splitting off the kick and snare mic that the house was already running. I used more splitter cables. I had a total of seven, I think in that setup and a total of, hmm, what was that? nine mics, I guess. It was crazy. And um, I don't recommend doing it. In theory, it would be really cool. And at a practice space where you can leave it set up, it would be cool. But hauling all that stuff, all those cables, and setting all of that up in addition to my base amp in about 15 minutes was a nightmare. It was the most stressful and high paced few minutes of my life. I mean, I was running around like crazy hooking stuff up and then getting confused and making sure that all the channels were coming through and then trying to mix it. And I ended up having the vocal mics clipping anyways, and the recording sounded okay, but not, not really worth the trouble. And the sound guy at one gig was totally confused with what I was doing. He'd never seen that. And he didn't know why I was running all these splitters and if he could get signal back to the house. And so it was just a mess. I don't recommend doing that. I was stressed out and I spent the entire show worrying about my little recorder setup rather than actually focusing on performing and playing my parts. For smaller bands, whether you're playing locally or even going on the road, a setup like this is perfect. You don't have the budget and the crew and the time to set everything up and mic stuff up and sound check it all. It's great if you can afford to do that and if you're doing national and international tours with a crew, then go for it you wouldn't be watching this video anyways. But 
really, this is all you need to hear yourself. And that's the point of this. You want to hear your vocals so that you can perform better. This is a performance tool. That's going to wrap it up. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will answer it. And I hope some of you try this out because many of you already probably have a board like this. So you already have most of what you need. So give it a shot and see how you like it. See if it makes your life way better like it did mine. And as always, smash like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.